Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about what is sound because last time we answered the question how we can hear sound. Like we we will rock you. We will we will rock you. How can we hear a sound? Or more Generally speaking, how we can hear a sound. We introduced the flow from outer ear to middle ear, finally inner ear. An incoming sound goes through the ear canal, reaching eardrum. Then the eardrum vibrates. This vibration takes the three tiny bones moving together with the eardrum. The three tiny bones are all attached together one by one like a chain. One end is attached to the ear eardrum. The other end is attached to inner ear. So the, the role of middle ear is to convert the vibration to a movement of the fluid in inner ear. So we mentioned this three steps. First step is in outer ear. It converts from air to solid. The second step is middle ear. Middle ear converts from solid to, yes, you're right, liquid. Third step is inner ear. Inner ear converts from, yes, from liquid to electrical impulses of nerves. After three steps, our brain is notified by the nerves, or more specifically, auditory nerves. With that in mind, we know that the critical components in our inner ear are hair cells. Those hair cells can communicate with the hearing nerves through electrical impulses. And the impulses from the hearing nerves tell brain that, okay, we are hearing one sound. So it's like your nerves Tell the brain, hey, brain, there's new incoming sound. Please prepare to receive the sound. Meanwhile, the electrical impulses have a way to encode the information of the incoming sound through a pattern of pulses. On the other end, our brain can detect the pattern of the pulses and interprets the meaning of the incoming sound. That's a whole procedure. 
through the whole procedure, then we can hear a sound. Okay, now we can see that the sound, the origin of a sound, then what is the origin of the sound? Yes, the origin of a sound is vibration. So the acoustics is a research field to study sound. Based on acoustics, sound is actually a mechanical wave created by vibration. So a sound source a sound source can be a cell phone, an um, MPC player, a movie, a bird chirping, so on and so forth. Our brain is so smart, it can detect where different sounds are coming from. What's the importance of each incoming sound? Are they relaxation or risky? Our brain can tell that. But fundamentally, all the sounds are mechanical waves created by different kinds of vibrations. So what is vibration then? Vibration is a movement of object from one point to another, then back to the initial point. So we can tell, okay, our eardrum can vibrate according to the property of an incoming sound. But how? So to talk about that, we will need to know factors related to vibration in general. There are three factors, inertia, elasticity, and damping. So we know in inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a body to maintain a state of rest or uniform motion unless acted upon by a external force. So that means our eardrum does not move or remain still if there is no sound. Elasticity. Last time I mentioned a, a friend. He travels through air flight. After flight, two days later, he had a rupture of eardrum. The reason was the rapid change of air pressure during takeoff. The rapid change caused an imbalance between the capacity inside the inner ear versus outside. So rupture happened. Fortunately, after surgery, he was able to fully recover. Here we can tell the elasticity of the eardrum is limited. Is if the difference between the air pressures inside versus outside of the eardrum are too different, it can cause rupture. So, in short, 
Elasticity is the ability of a body to return to a starting state after it has been deformed or moved by a force. So our eardrum will return to its resting state if the force of the air is not above certain amount. But if it is above certain amount, it can cause the rupture of our eardrum. More specifically, if we hear a huge noise, very, very loud, like a jet is taking off in front of you, just this one time may break your eardrum. Well, that's a dream case, but some people are more sensitive to rapid air pressure change than others. So they, they may want to protect the, the eardrum more. Dampening. Dampening is resistance to motion. For example, we just mentioned that there are three bones. attached to the back of your drum in a chain. Malleus, Incus, and Stapes. The last one, Stapes, is the smallest bone of our body. Remember that the middleman of our ear are three bones. They are very much fine-tuned for this hearing detection business. Okay, with that in mind, it's not surprising to say, hey, this is a hearing aid. No, I'm not kidding. This is a hearing aid. This is a tactile hearing aid. One end, the radio jack, is inserted into our cell phone. The other end is attached to our finger. So for somebody who have impaired hearing or hard hearing, they can use this device to help and get assistance to hearing better. So this is a hearing aid through touch. The theory with the fundamental underneath this device is that the sound comes from the jack to the vibration end of this uh, part. The vibration here will also uh, move the fingers. The bone of the finger will conduct the sound all the way. to our, yes, you're right, to our inner ear. Through what? Through the three tiny bones. That's called bone conduction of sound through our body. So that's not the end. There's another kind of hearing aid, even better. A dentist can implant a hearing aid in your tooth. 
No, no, no. This is not James Bond. This is true. So that nobody knows you are wearing a hearing aid or not because it looks like a tooth. And the theory is same. The implanted hearing aid, the tooth, will play a role of converting a air pressure to a bone vibration. After the chain of conducting, the bone vibration finally reaches middle ear, the three tiny bones. Then you can hear a sound. Okay, then finally we can play one of my favorite songs. Okay. There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch, bring me out of dark. Okay. So, fever pitch, wow, that's really high. But how can we tell the difference between a high pitched music versus a low pitched music? Which part of our brain? or year is responsible for telling the difference. How our human being is able to distinguish between low pitch sound versus high pitch sound. Next time I can tell you. Bye bye.